Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia, and this is the all-new 2021 Kia K5. Now we've got an EX model, it's an all-wheel drive model, we're going to talk about it. In this video, we're going to do a complete walk-around of the car. However, if you want to go more in-depth, we've already done a one-hour live video where we did an introduction. You can find that on our YouTube page, and you can also find the Kia um, K5 at night video, which we've already done. So this is an overview of this car. And I'm pretty excited about it. So here's the thing. This car replaces the Kia Optima in our lineup. But a lot of times, you know, we, we, they give a car a new name, but it's really just the same old car. In this case, Kia did the right thing. They dropped the Optima name because although this takes the place of the Optima in our lineup, it's really not an Optima anymore. It's a much more exciting car. It's loaded with features. It's a really nice car. Let's go take a look. As you come along the front of the car, you'll notice that that's really where you see this aggressive design coming in. And this aggressive design is real departure from the Optima. You've got the heartbeat style lighting in here. That amber lighting is only in North America. World markets, they have that lighting here, this design in white. You've got LED headlights down there, a nice aggressive grill. Under the hood, you've also got some new news. It is a 185 horsepower, 195 foot-pounds of torque, 1.6 liter turbo. Now what's cool about that engine is it gives you all of that 195 foot-pounds of torque right down low in the rev range, and you carry it through most of the power band. So you've got a small engine, which is great for fuel efficiency. The turbocharged uh, gives you power, and you've got it paired to an eight-speed transmission. So you've got a real range of gears to give you the power. It can multiply that torque down low to give you good acceleration and also great fuel efficiency. In addition, it's paired to an all-wheel drive platform, which means that you've got great winter traction. Along the rear end of this car, you've also got a real upgrade in styling. So you've got LED lights across the back and sort of this signature look. You'll be able to identify this car at night easily. And of course, we just did our at night video, so it's already up online if you want to see all the lights at night. You've also got this character line that on our Stinger and our Optima has run across the back of the car, but now it carries along through the trunk and up the other side. You've got sort of a false glass piece on the back of the trunk here just to make the whole area kind of look like that black glass look. So you've got a glass sunroof, a panoramic roof, flowing into the rear windshield, flowing into this panel back here and this chrome trim that gives it a really, really unique look in person. It's one of those things that doesn't show up great on film, but looks really, really good in person. Back here, you have what's called Kia Smart Trunk. Now, I haven't activated it right now because I want to show you that if you don't want it activated, you can approach the back of the trunk. If you do want it activated, you simply approach the back of the trunk. You don't wave your foot under the bumper. You don't do anything like that. You simply stand near the trunk, and the smart key, which is in my pocket, would make the lights flash five times in three seconds, and the trunk would come up on its own. If you don't want to do that, you can leave it exactly as it is right now. You can simply touch the button right here, and the trunk opens. Now, technically, this is a little bit less volume than the Optima. The Optima had a massive trunk, but I will say, the practicality and the way the space is laid out in this trunk, it is a very open trunk. There's not a lot of wheel intrusion. You've got a very, very deep trunk and a lot of good space for your luggage. So a lot of practicality, even on this all wheel drive platform. The vehicle is slightly, just slightly longer and just slightly wider than the Optima that it replaces. And it's just a hair lower. So it's similar size, but not at all a copy of that car. Now, when we talk about the size of a car, we say a little bit wider, a little bit longer, but a little bit lower. Does that mean that I'm going to have less headroom when I hop in the back seat? Well, first of all, these wide opening doors, they make getting in and out an easy thing to do. Now, what I like is even with this panoramic sunroof, I've got plenty of headroom. I've got plenty of space above my head. I'm about six feet tall. And this driver's seat is set to where I would need it. And you can see I've got tons of space. The other big thing is people like uh, SUVs and crossovers because they sit taller. But you'll notice when I sit on this seat, my legs are flat to the seat, just like in an SUV. So you're not really getting down into a car. You are sitting into the car, but you've got those SUV style comfortable seats that are raised off the floor. So my knees aren't up here. So if you're taking guests around in your vehicle, you can easily fit four people comfortably. Now I say four people comfortably because you can comfortably fit the fifth person width wise here. But because this is an all wheel drive car, you're gonna have a little bit of a tunnel through here. Let's face it, the person who sits in the middle is always gonna have their feet on either side of this armrest in the front anyways. You just do have an extra little taller tunnel because that all wheel drive traction gives you sure footed traction and it does require a drive shaft to run through here. So that's the one difference in the Optima you're gonna see. 
it's not going to bother me at all. You've got two USB ports down here. You've got your window uh, areas here. Nice piano black trim, nice wood trim in here. The backs of the seats are plastic, which means they're easy to wipe down if you've got kids in the area. And you've got a pocket on both driver and passenger side seats. So a lot of practicality. Great uh, view back here as well because this panoramic roof gives you a lot of light and allows you to sort of see out of the vehicle in a really unique way. Panoramic roofs are just super unique in this class and the Optima continued that even though on other vehicles like the Kia Soul, Kia continued that or Kia canceled that. The Optima brought it, the K5 brings it back in and it's really nice to see from the back seats here. The front seat driver's environment of this car is absolutely top notch. When you compare it to the Optima, You've got a nice thick steering wheel. I think it's a little bit thicker. Feels a little bit more sporty in my hands. It's a leather wrap wheel. Of course, it's heated. Your seats are heated. And again, we're in the EX model. There's LX, then EX. That's bottom of the line into this. You come across this car at this level, and it feels like the most luxurious car we sell. So it's something like a top-level Telluride, but it's actually not. You can still go up from here. So this wood trim app looks absolutely fantastic. The shelf-like design across the top, the way it blends into the door, it's perfectly done. Down here, you've got dual zone automatic climate control and you've got that three level automatic climate control. So ever had it where you turn on your automatic climate control and the fans blow like crazy to bring it up or down to temperature? Well, you can still leave it on automatic climate control, but you can limit that maximum fan speed to keep the car a little bit quieter. It'll take a little bit longer to reach temperature, but you can do that across the system here. You've got some smart design in here. Two USB ports out here and a 12 volt port. Now, normally we would talk about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with that section here and with those USB ports. You can still plug in a USB port for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay if that's what you wanna do, but you don't have to. Moving all the way back to the armrest, you've got this really cool spot right here, which you can slide your phone into. It will wirelessly charge while into that port and you have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and it works great. So super simple process. You get in the car, you set your phone down in a really logical spot and that's what you've got uh, for your system. So you can have CarPlay open all the time. You don't have to sit there and fiddle with a cord. It's not ugly and out of the way. Uh, moving forward, the gear shift in here, some people may recognize it from the four cylinder Kia Stinger. We only had that car here for a year so it's pretty rare to see that car but uh, that's where this is pulled right out of. So right out of the Stinger into this vehicle Eight-speed automatic transmission, like I mentioned, if you want to manually shift, you can drop it in the manual shift mode, and uh, that does not right away launch sport mode. Now, let's talk about drive modes. You've got smart, my favorite mode. Smart replaces eco. Instead of having an eco mode that locks you into a dull throttle and uh, resists those upshifts, the smart mode will give you great fuel efficiency, but as you move through the power band, if you need to give it a low power, you're getting on the highway or something like that, it won't resist those downshifts. It'll give you the power band, and then it'll bring it right back to an eco mode. So smart mode will adapt right for you. Then you've got the normal mode, sport mode, a custom mode where you can customize things. You can firm up the steering, but still leave the car in the normal mode, for instance. And you have a snow mode. Again, all wheel drive traction is a big feature of this car. And you've got a drive mode dedicated to poor weather, which is just fantastic. And there's no buttons to press or anything else to activate that all wheel drive. It works all the time. However, if you're driving on snowy roads, you can prioritize the all-wheel drive system for that mode. All right, moving through, you still have uh, electronic parking brake with the auto hold function. And let's just talk general comfort. These are leather seats, but they're that artificial leather that Kia has been using. I'm not a huge fan of leather seats. I find there's some issues with them, but this leather is amazing. Again, artificial leather, it feels really soft to the touch. It's also very durable. It is something that doesn't get too hot in the summer or too cold in the winter. You have your heated seats, of course, which you can use to warm them up. There's a perforation as the detail in here, as well as some nice stitching, and they're very comfortable. They're nice and wide, they're comfortable, they're long, they are power adjustable. The driver's seat is power adjustable with a lumbar, and it's just a really nice, comfortable seat. If you're sharing this vehicle, you've got really good extension on the uh, telescopic steering wheel, and of course it raises and lowers as well. One thing that's new, you'll just see a little bit new design detail in the wiper stock and the, and the headlight stock. Uh, they look pretty cool, but they also function with a little bit more positive feel. So again, that up, up uh, level feeling here. One thing I want to point out is the vents just to the left of the driver here. The top vent has this crisscross pattern. Uh, you don't need to put that crisscross pattern in there. You just, you know, most cars, they just have the vents just enough to keep something from falling out of there. But that crisscross pattern gives you that extra feeling of a nicer level car. And check out the vents down low. The bottom of these vents have a nice little design to them. 
Again, something that makes the car feel just a little bit nicer. And it's the little details like that when you hop in a car that you notice that make the car feel extra special. So that wood grain trim below and those uh, vents with the design on the bottom, they look pretty cool. Overall driver's position, comfortable but sporty. So not Kia Stinger level sporty where you really feel hugged into that deep bolstered seat, but you do kind of feel like this is a luxury slash sporty car, even though it's really an efficient commuter vehicle with all wheel drive, uh, handles fantastic. I drove it yesterday, stays very level in the corners, has sure foot traction with that all wheel drive. I drove it in the rain, uh, it was quite rainy and leaves everywhere. And uh, I tried to make a slip, but it did not sleep, slip for me. So very good traction in that way. Let's talk some basic safety stuff. Lane keep assist with the separate button for the lane follow assist. Lane keep assist keeps you centered in the lane when it sees the lane markers. Lane follow assist allows it to create an artificial lane if it doesn't have a lane marker. So let's say you're driving down a country road, there's no uh, right side lane marker. There's just gravel on the side of the road. The car can figure that out and it can keep you centered in the lane. The car is capable of steering itself in that situation. You've also got smart cruise control. The smart cruise control can see the vehicles in front of you and keep your distance. So now you have a car that's capable of steering on its own taking you around gentle bends on its own. Now it's still your responsibility to keep your hands on the wheel and it'll remind you if you don't, but it can take you around those bends and it can accelerate and brake for yourself. And we're working our way to autonomous driving, which will be something that is coming out for Kia in the 2022 model year vehicles. So that's uh, moving that way, but you already have a lot of benefits. Uh, something like a Tesla autopilot is very similar feeling to this vehicle as you're driving down the road. So that's a cool function right there. Safety wise as well, you've got the forward collision avoidance. You can avoid um, cyclists. It will avoid cyclists uh, or is capable of avoiding cyclists, pedestrians and vehicles in front of you. And also the new junction mode. So if you're heading into a, a intersection, you're about to turn left and maybe somebody's just running that red light, it's capable of seeing that and capable of breaking the vehicle to avoid that collision as well. It's a very common uh, collision. So that junction uh, collision avoidance system is gonna be a real uh, insurance saver on uh, insurance uh, costs. One other thing that's really unique that you don't see a lot is there is a tungsten grid in this window. I can't film it for you. It's so fine, you can, you basically cannot see it. If you look for it really carefully, you can kind of see it through the windshield here. What that does is it can defrost the entire windshield. No more scraping your windshield. So now you've got an all wheel drive car that drives great in the snow and you can run that little element and it can defog and defrost your windshield. It can take the snow and ice right off your windshield uh, it's one of the favorite functions I have on my 2020 Kia Soul EV, and they did not bring it out for the 2021 Kia Soul EV, but it is in this EXK5. Overall feeling, I want to point out one last thing with the lights in here. You've got that luxury feel with these uh, white LED lights, and when you touch them, they are touch activated. So you don't have to hit the switch to turn on the individual map light here. You can touch the rim of the light or just the glass itself. Panoramic sunroof, I've got it open for this video. You can close it. Uh, you can put an opaque cover on there as well. Really nice. Overall little design details, everything is soft touch. The armrest, not just soft touch, but a true soft touch. There are nice deep, um, you can push your fingers and push your elbows deep into that and have that nice soft feeling. So everything is soft touch, everything feels quality. And again, we're one step up from that LX model. The LX is the entry level. This is the EX model and it feels like a luxury car. So maybe this video has intrigued you. Here's why we make these videos. One, we want you to know about the car. Two, we want to earn your business. Three, I'm hoping to earn a like on YouTube and maybe your subscription. We do videos all the time. If you want to know something more about this car every weekday at two o'clock, we go live from this video bay. You can request a car like this. We'll go through the details. If you say, hey, just tell me about the safety. We can do a half an hour video on just the safety features. We can talk about the luxury features. We can talk about all kinds of features. We can show you the smart trunk. We can talk about the power. We can talk about the all-wheel drive system. All of those things are things that you can request from us, and we'll do a live video as well. We have other film videos, just technology videos. You can connect with us and do that. So if you're anywhere in Ontario, we want to be your K5 dealer. We want to earn your business, but at the very least, we want to earn your like and subscription, and we want to fill you with content on all the key vehicles that you're interested in. Thanks, everybody, for watching.